Hello Electroheads. If you've been watching the news lately, you've probably seen the warnings issued by the British press that e-bikes across the country have been setting homes ablaze and even causing death in some instances. These unfortunate cases are very disheartening. E-bikes are meant to be the safer alternative method of travel and seeing that some of them are catching fire does understandably reduce confidence in the adoption of e-rides. But remember that electric bikes are still by definition a much lower risk than using a car and lithium ion batteries are for the most part very safe and low maintenance or they wouldn't be used to charge most of our electronic devices we use today. A few unfortunate cases, as with any new tech, is going to make the news and cause panic. But rest assured, today I'm going to be running through some facts and figures that will help you understand what to look out for when purchasing an electric bike or scooter or anything. More specifically, understand how to pick the right type of e-bike battery and what not to do with them. Now, while the number of fires relating to e-bikes is naturally increasing due to the popularity of e-bikes rising, the number of those actually catching fire is a very small fraction. Last year, insurance group Zorig reported that there were just 167 e-ride fires in the UK. Those 167 e-rides being one of a million e-scooters and 500,000 e-bikes. That makes a percentage of explosions just 0.011%. In the first six months of this year, there have been 73 e-bike fires reported. Now, obviously I don't want to invalidate or discredit the severity of these unfortunate instances, but these reports clearly indicate that faulty lithium ion batteries are the main cause of the fires, not just electric bikes as a whole. And I totally get it, it's easy to make the assumption that the devices themselves are at fault. It's an easy conclusion to jump to. But do you not remember when house fires from exploding laptop batteries were in the news? Back in 2006, Niles Barkley released the song Crazy, which is an absolute banger. But so it turns out, were Dell laptops. A Guardian report stated that Dell issued a warning that 4.1 million laptops were at risk of exploding and catching fire. In a humiliating display, the computer giant were forced to confess that there were problems with their computer's batteries, as reports of exploding laptops began to crop up worldwide. But now, laptops are ubiquitous. And there are even more examples. Do you not remember back in the 1940s? Do you remember that? In the 40s, when microwave radiation was implemented into ovens as a means to heat our food quicker. Didn't trust them, did we? We thought our DNA was going to be mutated and we'd give rise to a generation of mutated offspring. But no, we ended up inventing the microwave and causing health problems long term instead. And do you remember when GPS navigation was rumoured to start brainwashing users and make us blindly follow wherever they told us? Okay, I made that one up, I didn't do enough research. But you see my point, right? From 2003 to 2006, there were 200 reports of Apple MacBook batteries being the cause of house fires. But today, people don't regard laptops with the same animosity as they do electric bikes. All sounds quite familiar. So what's going on right now? So what exactly is the cause for e-bike batteries catching fire in the first place? Well, the main cause is a process known as thermal runaway, which happens as a result of battery cells overheating due to an internal fault or extreme temperatures. When a battery cell reaches a certain temperature, it will result in exothermic reactions, producing more heat than can be dissipated to its surroundings, meaning the internal structure of the battery cell will collapse, causing flammable and toxic gases to release. This then starts a chain reaction of the surrounding e-bike battery cells to catch fire, creating an irreversible state of thermal runaway. The London Fire Brigade has recently revealed that 40% of e-bike fires are actually caused by people using universal chargers. Not using the correct charging equipment that is compatible with the e-bike's voltage is extremely dangerous and can easily prompt thermal runaway. A recent survey conducted by Electrical Safety First revealed that out of 1,000 e-bikes and e-scooter owners, 43% of the poll use secondary aftermarket chargers to power their rides. Out of those questioned, over one in three admitted their charger wasn't compatible with the voltage of the battery, and one in five said they didn't even know. So there's a clear percentage of e-bike battery owners who haven't been educated in the safety of charging a PLEV battery. So if anyone watching owns an electric bike or is interested in buying an electric bike, use the correct conversion kit. Do not use a secondary universal charger. The results can literally be fatal, and I don't want to have to write and record another video about batteries. So take note. Okay. Electrical Safety First also strongly recommends not to charge a device close to a fire escape or an exit. Doing this will increase the risk of trapping yourself or others in a building during a fire. When our government don't regulate electric vehicles, this actually opens a window for manufacturing companies to make a quick buck by using cheap, poorly made batteries for their products. But how do you notice the signs that your e-bike battery hasn't been produced safely? One of the key elements that an e-bike battery can lack is a battery management system, or a BMS. A battery management system is essentially a small printed circuit board that controls and monitors the charging and discharge of the battery pack. When using an electric bike battery, it's vital the battery remains balanced, which basically means the voltage throughout the battery is consistent across all aligned battery cells. A decent BMS will detect this if it changes and shut the battery down and stop it from being charged or discharged. So when purchasing an electric bike, be sure to inquire if the kit comes fitted with a BMS, as this will be a clear indicator the manufacturer was conscientious when it comes to the safety of the battery. Keep a lookout for reputable con- <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, I don't know why I'm struggling with that one. Keep a lookout for reputable... <laughs> Keep a lookout for reputable... <laughs> Guys, I'm so sorry. Try and keep a lookout for reputable... Re I can't say it. <laughs> You're gonna have to dub me. You're gonna have to ADR me. Try and keep a lookout for reputable company names of battery manufacturers, such as Bosch or Samsung. If you have a battery by companies such as these two, this means the final assembly of these batteries will almost certainly have been produced in properly regulated factories. If your e-bike ever gets damaged, make sure to take your e-bike battery to a reputable, authorised dealer for your e-bike brand. Also, before I go any further, I'm obligated to ask that if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like and make sure to subscribe to the channel. We also have an online store where we sell the best e-bikes, e-scooters and accessories that we ensure are supplied by the safest, trustworthy manufacturers. Another key cause of thermal runaway is actually overcharging your e-bike's battery, which can cause its battery cells to overheat and ultimately catch fire. Look out for signs of an overcharged battery, like the battery feeling too hot to touch during charging, the battery's charge level no longer increasing during a certain point, and perhaps the biggest red flag, the voltage being higher than the manufacturer's recommended range. In other words, don't leave your battery on full charge for a month. Any less though, fine. Nah, I'm joking. Make sure you keep an eye on it. Not like all the time, but and just don't be charging it for ages, use your common sense. Currently, government requirements stipulate that electrically assisted pedal cycles must show the power output and the battery's voltage, as well as display the manufacturer of the motor. The electric motor must also have a maximum power output of 250 watts, and riders should not be able to exceed 15.5 miles an hour when riding the bike. But while that's all well and good, there are no specific regulations on conversion kits. So all in all, what do we need to act on? Again, buying batteries from a reputable manufacturer and using the appropriate charging kit is a must. Using a universal charger is a huge danger when it comes to charging lithium-ion batteries and mustn't be taken lightly. New technologies and methods of transport are being introduced all the time and accompanying risks are often inevitable during the process. Electric bikes for the most part offer more environmentally friendly means of transport, are less congested and safer ways of getting around. To reduce these rare unfortunate incidents we must strive for more education, regulation and understanding of what goes into an e-bike battery rather than hastily write off the vehicles they power. But what do you guys think. Again, we encourage debate here at Lecky Heads. Please feel free to comment any insight you think you could offer and I'll do my best to read them and get back to you. We test ride all of our products before selling them and ensure they are built by the most reliable manufacturers to make your life as safe as possible. Because we love you. Take care of yourselves guys and I'll see you in the next one.